Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on calculating Spearman's rank correlation coefficient using Microsoft Excel. Spearman's rank correlation coefficient is a non-parametric alternative to the Pearson product moment correlation coefficient. Oftentimes in counseling research, we want to evaluate the association between two variables, such as the variables I have here, I have some fictitious data, ID, final exam, and GPA. So of interest would be the relationship between the final exam and the GPA. The most common route to go here would to be use Pearson's R, but Pearson's R has assumptions that are sometimes violated by our data, and the assumptions for Spearman's rank correlation coefficient are different they are a bit more flexible. So for example, with Pearson's R, there is an assumption of linearity. That is, there's a linear relationship between the two variables of interest. And in a linear relationship, change in one variable is associated with a proportional change in the other variable. With Spearman's rank correlation coefficient, a monotonic relationship is evaluated. That is, when one variable changes, the other tends to change, but not necessarily at a constant rate. So Spearman's row is appropriate for rank ordered data, which is what I'll be demonstrating here. So let's take a look at the formula for Spearman's row. We can see it equals one minus 6 multiplied by the sum of the differences squared divided by n cubed minus n. So I'm going to go through all these steps in Excel and calculate the value of r. So taking a look at these data, we can see that we have a final exam and the ID numbers are ordered in the same rank as the final. So the final exam would have been administered and then the ID numbers would have been assigned. So the first step, which is calculating the exam rank, that's actually relatively easy. It's just one, two, and then autofill all the way down. So these are the corresponding ranks for the final exam. Now with GPA, we'll use a function to calculate the rank. And it'll be equal sign rank dot EQ. And the first argument it's looking for is the number, in this case, the contents of cell C2, GPA 3.8. And then the range, we want to evaluate that number against, which is the range of all the GPAs. And I want to make sure I go in here and hit function 4, F4, to make that range absolute. And we can see that the GPA ranks 2. So there is a GPA higher than 3.8. You see it's down here, it's 3.94. But here we can just autofill these ranks down. So now we have the exam rank and the GPA rank. For D, this will be the difference between the two ranks. So that will be equal sign 1 minus, in this case, 2, or D2 minus E2. You see that's negative 1, and here we can just autofill that all the way down. And then we want to square D, and there's a few ways we can do this, but I'm just going to take the value of F2, and then it's Shift 6, which is the caret symbol. So F2 caret, and then 2. So F2 raised to the power of 2, or squared and we want to autofill that all the way down. So now we have all the squares of the differences. So then looking at building the numerator here, we first need the sum of all those squares. So that'll be equal sign sum, and I'll select the range of all the square differences. We can see it's 395. So to calculate the numerator, we just need to multiply 6 by 395. 
So it'll be equal sign, six, then asterisk for multiply, and then I'm going to select J9, which is 395. So the numerator is 2370. Now we have n as we start to build the denominator. And n is the count, the number of pairs. In this case, we know it's 20. And to calculate n cubed, it'll be j12 and caret, then 3. So n raised to the third power, that's 8,000. So n cubed minus n, very easy to calculate here, would be j13 minus j12. 7,980. And now from this point it's fairly straightforward to calculate Spearman's row. First I'll start with equal sign then 1 minus an open parentheses and take the numerator and divide it by the denominator. So you can see we have a Spearman's row value of 0.7. Now, we don't have any information whether this is a significant value or not from Excel. Uh, in SPSS, for example, you're provided with whether or not this value is statistically significant. So you're actually given the p-value, and you can determine whether it's statistically significant or not based on your alpha setting. I happen to know this value is statistically significant. And without using software such as SPSS, you can still figure this out by searching for critical values tables for Spearman's rank correlation coefficient. And that table will have several, usually those tables will have several alpha settings like 0 0.01 and 0 0.05. And it will also have either n, because it's based on the count, or degrees of freedom. So I want to show you how to calculate degrees of freedom so when you look at those critical values table, you can find the right critical value against which to evaluate your R value. And degrees of freedom in Spearman's rank correlation coefficient is fairly straightforward. It's n minus 2. So in this case, 20 minus 2. So there are 18 degrees of freedom here. I hope you found this video on calculating Spearman's rank correlation and coefficient to be helpful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me, and I'll be happy to assist you.